Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am finishing up my seven days of inspiration featuring my brand new Shine Bright collection available at Spellbinders. And I wanted to share a fun card with you to finish off the series. Today I'm gonna to be using the Disco Impressions press plates along with the Shine Bright sentiment strips. I'll also be using the Sparkle hot foil background and the Shine Bright dies to create this card. So I'm gonna get started with a little bit of hot foiling to begin with and then we'll do some die cutting and put this card together. So while my hot foil system heats up, I have it turned on here and I'll know it's ready when that um, platform ready light comes on. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare some foil for the images that I'm going to be foiling. So these are my favorite pro shears from Spellbinders. If you don't have a pair of these, you gotta get them. They cut foil like butter. I'm going to be using a mixture of foils. I'm going to be using the silver foil from Spellbinders as well as the Aura foil. I'm going to be foiling my background in the Aura, it's not the Aura, it's the Prism foil, excuse me. And then I'm going to foil my Disco Ball and my Sentiments in the silver foil in, instead. That kind of gives it a little more, it's a little more visible on the white, so it kind of helps it to stand out more. You can see the difference between the two of them there. So I'm just prepping my foils there. And these are the colors that I'm going to be using today. I have them pulled out. You can see I have scraps. I'll be using some gray and cream, white. And then these colors are watermelon, nectar, citrine. This one is from Stamp Market. This is juniper and sea glass. The rest of these besides the citrine are from Concord and Ninth. So I think I'll start out by foiling my sparkle background hot foil plate. Everybody has loved this in the release so far. It is absolutely perfect for so many different occasions, for the holidays, for celebrations, you name it. It is just the perfect background. And I only need um, one turn of this, so I have a smaller piece of cardstock here. And what I'll do to ensure that I have it kind of lined up, actually I'll move it away from the edge just a little bit because I will be die cutting this down. But to keep it in place, I'll just use a little piece of best ever craft tape and hold that in place. And that creates a hinge where I can then open this up and I can place my foil. Now, when I place my foil, I wanna make sure that I'm placing the pretty side to the pretty side. You can see I don't have quite enough in length to reach the entire thing, but I already know that I'm die cutting this down. And so I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna foil it as it is. I'll make sure that that kind of just stays in place while I close my hot foil plate back over onto the cardstock. And then if you wanted to, you can trim off any excess here. It doesn't usually bother me, but I know you guys hate it when I waste product. So <laughs> I'll save that little scrap for like a sentiment strip or something. Now I can go ahead and place this on my Glimmer hot foil platform and I'll wait for that to be ready. While that's kind of doing its thing, I'm going to grab this smaller set of press plate sentiments here. This is the Shine Bright sentiment strips. I'm going to use that smaller one there at the top and we'll die cut those with the coordinating die. And I'm also going to grab the Disco Impressions press plates. Now keep in mind, these are both press plates, so both of these can be used with your Glimmer Hot Foil system or with your better press. So these press plate sets can be used either with your Glimmer Hot Foil system or your better press letter press system. But the Sparkle background is a hot foil plate, so it can only be used in your Glimmer Hot Foil system. Just due to some manufacturing requirements, we weren't able to make the Sparkle background in a press plate. So my platform is ready. I'm going to go ahead and start my timer here. And I can go ahead while that's going and just trim down some cardstock to foil these items. Sometimes I trim down, if I, especially if I wanna do more than one item at a time. And I am going to grab just a little scrap of the sea glass and I'll prep this so I can just trim this down here. Let's see, do I wanna do it that way? And then I will also trim down my foil and have these ready so that I can just move 
from one foiling into the next. Now my foil or my timer may be complete before I finish this. If it sits on there just a minute or so longer, that's not gonna hurt anything. But I am going to make sure that the pretty side of my foil is touching the pretty side of my press plate. And I just thought about this. This might be too narrow for all of my strip die cuts that coordinate with this. So I'm going to grab a little bit larger piece of sea glass and I'm going to foil it on this instead. I just don't want to foil and then not be able to use it. So I'll just line that up there. And then I can grab my other little scrap of silver foil and trim that down for my disco ball. And look how easy this foil cuts with these scissors. I'm not lying y'all, these are like some of the best scissors I have ever used. Foiling, cutting foil can be a little bit difficult and these scissors just make it so nice. So I'll prep those, those are ready to go on my platform. This is all done heating up, so I'm going to grab my Spellbinders Platinum 6. I'm gonna release the platform from the base. I'm going to add my shims here. This is the thin shim and the spacer pad that come with the Glimmer Hot Foil system. And then I'll just run that through my Platinum 6. Once I've run that through, I'm gonna make sure that I re-engage the platform because I know I wanna move from one foil into the other. And I can pick this up using a strong magnet and I'll just set it on my glass work surface to allow the heat to dissipate. And I'll go ahead and place these items onto my platform to allow those to start heating up. And you can see the platform is already ready again. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that timer again. And this should be cool enough now after sitting on my glass work surface to kind of do the peel and reveal, which I can feel that it is. You don't actually have to let these cool down. It's just these larger plates can get a little bit hot. So let's have a peek at this. Oh, just such beautiful results there. So much shine. I absolutely love that. So that's ready to go. And then once this is run through its timer system, we'll go ahead and hot foil these. Okay, so that's run through the timer. I'll go ahead and release this, place it onto the platform of my Platinum 6. And for these press plates, I just found, especially when I'm hot foiling onto a colored cardstock, I like to use a lightweight cardstock shim between the foils, and I just find that I'm getting better results with that. Every machine is a little different and over time your tension can change. I'm still using the original Platinum 6 that I've had for years and years and years. So it's been doing a lot of die cutting, a lot of foiling over the years. So my tension may have changed just a little over the years. But we will go ahead and remove those shims and then we can do the peel and reveal on these as well. Oh, I almost missed that letter, but I did not. So we have perfect foiling there. Looks like a slight bit of overfoil on that one. And then on this, this is my favorite. I love the silver on a light gray cardstock for these disco balls. Now you can use the layered disco impression stencil set to add some more color to this, but I actually love the simplicity of this on its own for this particular card. So now I'm done with my foiling system. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and I'll set it aside. And now I'll start grabbing the coordinating dies that I need for each of these images. I'm going to grab the sentiment strips, my disco ball. I'm also going to be using this shine bright here, but just the shine from this. So I'm grabbing that and for my background, I'm going to be using these nested A2, dart, A2 arches. And I'm going to use one, two, three, four, and five. Yes, four and five. The smaller one to cut out my background is going to be, it's going to be the smaller one. And I'll just center that up and kind of get it where I like it. And I'll hold that in place with a little bit of, craft tape. I'm actually going to just use, reuse this piece from my sparkle background. 
And I'm just kind of centering that up where this radial point or the, the radiating point will be kind of at the left edge. So you can see how I am lining that up and then I'll hold it in place with the best ever craft tape. And I'm going to repeat the process with these other dies, positioning them over the images. So this die is meant to cut right up to the edge of this disco ball. And I do share some tips and tricks here on YouTube on how to make sure that you line up your die cut perfectly every time. I'm just gonna eyeball it for this card. I know that's a little bit crazy, but this cuts right up to the edge. And once you kind of get the feel for it of where it lands, you can really do this without a template, but if you are struggling with that, I suggest that you make a template and I'll pop the video that I created for the tips and tricks for this set in the upper right hand corner. But before I die cut this little bit, I'm gonna just get rid of some of that over foiling that I had right there in the corner and right above that eye. Now, obviously I'm not using all of these sentiments on today's card, so I'll have plenty left over to use on other card projects. And I love that these sentiments are so encouraging. They're just, they're just kind of like a breath of fresh air, encouraging others to shine their light and celebrate other people for their light in the world. So now that I have all of those lined up, I'm going to place them onto my cutting mat here. For this, I'm using my Anna Griffin Empress machine and I'll run that through. And we'll just kind of place everything into this little heart dish. You can see I got a cute little disco ball there. And for the sentiments, I'm just going to pop them out. I'm actually going to set the ones that I'm not using aside. I'm going to use So Proud of You on this particular card project. And then I have several others that I can use on future card projects. I'm going to die cut my arch background and then I need to die cut this shine word from five different colors of cardstock. Now you could either just position this where you're only die cutting the letter that you want from each color of cardstock, but I find that if you just die cut the whole word, you can create up to five different cards just having the colors in different orders. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim out cardstock and die cut the whole word. So we have our beautiful sparkle background here that we've cut into a die, into an arch shape. And I'm gonna do as much die cutting as I can with each pass of the machine. So for this one, I also need a nectar colored arch. So I'm going to line that die up. It's gonna fit on this little scrap just perfectly. So we'll make sure that that stays in place. I'm gonna pop out these letters here, place them in my little dish. And then I will grab this scrap of sea glass and we'll cut that. All right, so this is the same size arch as the previous arch that I die cut. And it looks like I might need to run that through one more time. I didn't quite get a full cut on that. I'm gonna place my shine letters into my little dish here. Then I'll move on to my next color, which will be citrine. We'll die cut those letters. All right. I do have laundry going in the next room, so I don't know if you can hear that or not. My craft room is actually directly next door to our laundry room, which makes it convenient because then I can run in there and turn over loads and that sort of thing. But also if I'm filming live audio, I always wonder if you can hear that. So I apologize if you can, but the laundry must be done. <laughs> now I use the smaller arch for these two. I'm gonna use the little bit larger arch and I'm going to create a shadow layer. So I found another scrap that this will fit on and I'll use the larger sized arch to die cut that. And 
And then I need the shine word from Watermelon. You can see I'm just using scraps for this, trimming them down. And the last thing that I need is the little sparkle piece. This is actually from the Disco Ball die set, which has been so popular. I'm gonna use this little sparkle piece here. And I'm going to die cut it from the Aaron Lee Holographic cardstock. Okay, so that should complete my die cutting here for this card. I have my little sparkle pieces. We'll make sure that those get into the little dish that I'm using so that we don't lose any of those. And then this die, I'm going to make sure I put right back into the package so that I don't lose that. So now I have all of my pieces and I'm going to work on stacking up some dimension for the shine. Off camera, I die cut two of the shine shadow layers and I die cut the shine word from white cardstock three times. I'm going to pick out my letters that I want and just kind of figure out the order. So I'll just pick these out and then I can set the other colored cardstock letters aside while I work on stacking all these up. And I won't make you watch me stack them all up. I'll maybe show you one and then we can, um, you know, we can do some magic of television. How's that? Okay, so I did a little sorting to make our life easier. And what I like to do is just take the under layers and add some liquid glue to those and then take the top layer. So my colored piece, my colored cardstock piece will be the top layer. And then I just kind of like to stack up those under layers underneath the colored cardstock piece. So I'll just pick them up and grab them and then kind of sort it all out into place with my fingers. And I'm gonna continue that process with all of these letters and the shadow layers and then we'll place them all onto the shadow layer. Okay, so I have everything stacked up and now I can add liquid glue to the back of these individual letters and just line them up within the shadow. And they kind of, you can kind of see like the peaks of each letter, which makes these letters really easy to line up. We kind of went back and forth between how we wanted to do the shadow, like if we wanted there to be a little bit of differentiation on the shadow layer or if it would be a more smooth edge all, all the way around. And I'm glad we did it this way, which was um, kind of more definition between the letters because it really makes lining up these letters very easy on the shadow layer. And this shadow layer also looks really cool in like a holographic cardstock or a metallic cardstock. It even looks um, cool in vellum as well. So we'll just line all of those up onto the shadow layer. You can see they pop in pretty easily and press that down. Make sure that everything gets kind of adhered down. I have all of my other letters up here and I can use those in just a bit on another card, but I'm going to take this and just add a little bit of liquid glue right along the bottom of this shadow layer on the back side. And then I'm going to line this up and just kind of overlap it onto that so proud of you sentiment. Trying to keep it kind of centered up on the entire um, banner here. And just kind of looking where, it's kind of hard with these points to kind of see where they, they go, but I'm gonna scooch that just a bit more. And it sounds like my washing machine is about ready to like take off for space here. So I apologize if you can hear that. Okay, I took a little break, cleaned up a little bit because the washing machine needed some time to finish up and it is now done. So we can move on with our card. I'm just going to grab my trimmer here and I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to trim this down. And the way I wanna do this is I wanna put the left corner, which it's kind of upside down for you right here, but I'm gonna put the first corner here at one inch and I'm gonna put the other corner at two inches with my arch at the top. And then I'm gonna trim that. And that's gonna give me the perfect little angle for the bottom of my arch here. 
and I'll, I'll layer these just right on top of each other. I'm gonna use just a little bit of tape runner adhesive to adhere this to the bottom of the foiled arch. And I like to just use the, my surface of my desk and just kind of make sure the bottoms are pushed up against each other. And then that the sides, I'll use my fingers along the sides to make sure everything lines up well. And then this entire thing is going to mount onto that larger layer to give it a little bit of a shadow. So again, I know this is really surprising, but I'm just using tape runner adhesive for this. <laughs> I tend to do a lot of dimension and I really like dimension, but sometimes when you're working with this many layers, if you put foam on every layer, then it gets really, really chunky, really fast. So press that down. Then I have my disco ball and I'm going to place it kind of at an angle here and layer this right over the top, but I do want some foam adhesive on my disco ball. So I'm going to grab just some of my scraps that I have over here and I'm gonna flip my disco ball over to the back and just see what I have here as far as scraps go. And we'll just trim some of this down and place it right on the back of the disco ball. And just place it there and then trim off any excess. I want this to have like a pretty good solid layer of foam adhesive behind it. So I am adding quite a bit, but it's just how it goes. And then once I have that, I'll remove the backer. And I can place this onto my card front kind of at an angle here. And I like to just kind of make sure that this open area at the top, I don't know if you can see that. See how there's like an open area? That's, that's the top to me and the bottom area is this kind of flatter, less circular. So I'm just going to take this and kind of, I don't know, right about there-ish, maybe over just a slight bit. And then I can take my shine and just layer that right over the top, kind of along the angle of that peach, which you can't really see the angle of that, but that's okay because it gives us that, I don't know, angle to work off of. For this, I'm just adding some liquid glue along the back. And actually, I kind of messed that up because I need to add some foam adhesive along this side, maybe around there-ish. So we'll just come across the center there. It's okay that that liquid glue was already there. It's just gonna hold my foam adhesive in place. And I'll take this entire thing and just place it at an angle, probably right about there. And I'm just using that peach piece underneath to kind of help guide me along my angle and I'll place that down. Now it's kind of cool because you can see the white um, showing through on the bottom and I do need to lift this up and I need to sneak some foam adhesive under there. So I'm gonna take a strip here and I'll remove the backer and I'm just gonna kind of sneak it under. I should have reinforced this when I had it off of the card instead of doing it here, but I didn't realize that it would want to sag as much as it does. So I'm just gonna take that and tuck it, make sure it gets all the way under so that we don't see the little tip coming out and now we have it reinforced. So we are on the home stretch of this card. I have a piece of ivory cardstock. This is my favorite ivory cardstock. It's from Hero Arts. And I have it cut to five and a half by eight and a half. I'm scoring it at four and a quarter. And this will create a side folding A2 size card. A2 is what we tend to use here in the US most often. And once I get that folded and I have my, my crease nice and tight, I'm going to use some foam adhesive on the back of this 
and I'm going to place it onto my card front using a layer of foam adhesive. I'm just gonna remove the backer now from all of this foam adhesive. Oh my. <laughs> and I will place this on to my card front and I'll get it centered up. Just kind of making sure all of the sides are equal and the bottom is equal and we'll just get it straight there and then lay it down. Perfect, just like that. And then I'm going to finish off my card with some little sparkles that we die cut. I went ahead during our little um, washing machine break and put some foam adhesive on the backs of these so that we could place them on easily. And I'll take this little sparkle and I'm just going to go with him down here. I don't know why he's a him, but he is. And then my little medium sparkle, there's three sizes in this little sparkle die. And my little medium sparkle will kind of put right here where it's kind of nesting between those letters. And finally, we have tiny sparkle. And we'll just kind of place her. Oh, it's like daddy bear, mama bear, and baby bear right there. <laughs> and I'll place that there. So that finishes off my card for today and it finishes up Shine Bright Inspiration Week, seven days of inspiration using my brand new Shine Bright collection from Spellbinders. I really love the colorful letters on this card. I think it's such a fun way to use that Shine Bright die set along with some of the other products in the Shine Bright collection. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. Or you can head on over to my website at sprinkledwithglitter.com. I'll have that linked below as well. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. As always, I wanna say thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I'm so glad you're here. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here so you don't miss any of my paper crafting and card making video tutorials. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to shine bright. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.